Hello everyone! I have created a couple of videos covering the topic of sky replacement in DaVinci Resolve, but I have just realized that I still haven't shown you a great tool available in the newest update of Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 18.1, that allows you to create your own realistically looking sky. Also, it's important that tool is available in the free version of Resolve, and I'm sure you're gonna love it. This is our before and after. So let's go to the main part of the video. And this is my clip. I traditionally got it from Artgrid. It's already graded as we won't be focusing on grading today. All I want to show you is the inbuilt sky replacement effect in Resolve. And this shot is a very good example as the sky is quite uninteresting here and basically burned out. So we will try to add a better quality to it. Let's move to the node tree. And here I have only two nodes, as this is all we need. So on the first node, we have to isolate the sky. So let's click on it and let's go here to the qualifier. Then I'll sample the sky and I'll turn the highlight on. And this time the qualifier did a very good job, as the color and the luminance of the sky is completely different to the rest of the shot. So I will only blur the selection down here, like this. But you may struggle a little bit here and you may have to spend a bit more time on it. It all depends on your clip. So maybe you will have to play with the sliders a bit more and create an additional mask with the power windows. I only can see that I have to get rid of these shoes moving around here. So I'll grab a power window. Then I'll grab a custom mask. Then I'll draw around the shoes. Then I have to reverse it here. And let's play the clip. That's perfect. The shoes disappeared. I don't even have to track the mask. So let's go back to the note tree and let's go here to the effects. Then I'll just type here sky replacement and I'll drop it onto my second note. And then here in the inspector we have all of the tools we can use. But first, we have to connect the blue output from the previous node to the blue input of the second node in order to transfer the key information from one node to another. And this is what we got. Let's play the clip to see if it looks alright. Great. And let's move to all the settings here on the right, so I can explain it to you. So here we can toggle the mask on and off if you want to. Then we can also refine the mask more, so we can shift the edge, refine the mask, or improve the black and white levels. So if you need to improve your mask, you can use these. Then let's move straight to the artificial sky. And here we have to increase the sky opacity. And look what happened. We've just created a very basic sky. And now we will be working on it to make it look more natural. So here we can change the sky color and make it more or less saturated. I will go for something like this. I just want to make it fit my shot like this. Then we can also change the color of the horizon. So you can play around with it if you want to create an evening or the nighttime sky, but I will leave it white. Right. Then we can also change the softness, the height and the angle of the horizon. It's all customizable. And now let's scroll down and here we can also create some clouds. I find it very cool. So again, let's increase the opacity. Then we can change the scale of the clouds, shape or tilt. Then we can add more details to the clouds and look how realistic it looks. Then we can decrease the cloud detail or fill the sky more with the clouds. Basically, you can do anything you want here. And if you want your clouds to move, you can change the cloud time and use the keyframes. I am not going to use this feature as my shot is very short and it wouldn't look natural. So let's scroll down here and we can add a hotspot, which is a sun basically, and you can make it more or less bright. You can move it around. And you can change the size of it or the sharpness. I don't want any sun, so I'll just turn it off. Then let's skip the tracking bit for now. And let's go to the sky integration. And here we can change the lens distortion if we need to. Lens defocus as well to make the sky blend better with the shot depending on its depth of field. 
Then we can change the exposure of the sky. Then we can go to foreground appearance. And here we can do a quick color correction of the foreground if we need to. So we can change things like the brightness, the saturation or tint of the shot. But let me reset it, I don't need it. And at the end, we've got a global blend where we can blend our new sky with the old one when we feel that it still looks a bit artificial. Like this. Maybe I'll leave it somewhere here. And now our shot is moving a bit, so we obviously have to track it. So the sky moves with it. And I've discovered that the best setting for me is to track the original sky. It works best. So let's just hit this button and let's track the shot. And now we can see that the sky has changed the position a bit because of this. But we can easily fix it by adjusting the size of the sky here. I hope this was helpful. So let's just watch the final result full screen. Thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.